We're going to be talking about vis groups in this video. Vis groups uh, in Relight are the way that materials are associated with objects, but more generally, a vis group uh, defines in any given context which objects are visible and what they look like. Now you'll notice when you first start up Relight that nothing is visible in a 3D viewer. That's because we need to specify up here at the top of the 3D viewer which vis group we want to see. Now in this scene, there are no vis groups yet, so there's only two, poss two possibilities. None for no objects or all. So here we're looking at all objects in the scene. So this is a very simple scene with one object, a T-Rex, uh, a camera, and three light sources. So if we turn on uh, shading in the 3D view, you'll see that the T-Rex is black because there's no material associated with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a vis group which we'll call VisGroup T-Rex. We're going to set that as the current VisGroup in the 3D view, and you'll see there's nothing in it initially, so we'll tur turn all back on so we can see all the objects in the scene, whether they have materials or not. We pick our T-Rex, and then we say, assign material to selection. There are no materials yet, so we need to create one. We'll create one based on the um, base material class, which is the, the default material used for everything. And there, now we have a material. So we can edit the material, give it a different color, green dinosaur, brownish dinosaur. And if we render now, we'll see that the dinosaur has uses that material. Whenever you render in Relight, you need to specify which vis group you want to render. So that's useful for uh, assigning a single material to a whole object, but y you can do much more than that, obviously. Uh, you can see in this object, there are actually lots of different geometry groups, or what other software calls clusters, defined. And so it would be useful to assign different materials to different geometry groups. So what we're doing here is we're picking geometry groups in the 3D view. With the right mouse button, you can select geometry groups. And we're picking all the um, geometry groups corresponding to the claws of the dinosaur. There we go. Now again, we're going to say assign material to selection. We'll create a new material again, which we'll call claws. There we go. We can edit the material, make, make the claws a bit yellowish. If we render, we can see our new material. Now we're going to do the same thing with the tongue. We pick the geometry group, which contains the tongue, assign a new material to it again, which we'll call tongue. We can edit the material, make it blood red, render again, we've got a red tongue. And lastly, we're going to create a different material for the teeth. So lots of teeth, so the, the easiest thing to do here is to pick the whole head and then, then just deselect everything which is not a tooth, including the tongue. And there we go. So we now, now we've got all our, our, all our teeth selected. We assign a new material to it, which we'll call teeth. We'll give the T-Rex some nice white teeth, re-render, and there you go. Okay, so what we just did here by assigning different materials to different geometry groups behind the scenes is we automatically created a certain number of shading groups, uh, four, four different shading groups, I think. So in the 3D view, just as we can pick geometry groups, we can also pick shading groups. So everything which has the tooth material, everything which has the tongue material, etc. We can see that better if we go into the uh, attribute editor for the geometry and look at the, uh, the shading group attribute. We can see a list of all the geometry groups on the left, all the shading groups on the right, and to which shading group each geometry group, geometry group belongs to. And we can also see that in the viz group editor where we can see all the information about, about the different viz groups. So you can see in the leftmost column all the shading groups in our scene and in the second column, the materials assigned to those, op those shading groups in our single vis group. We can also use the vis group editor to assign materials. Here we assigned the tongue material to the claws, or we can turn the claws off completely.
And I'll put the teeth back, uh, no, the claws rather, back on, on the claws. And now let's create another viz group, which we'll call viz group skin. Say we want a, uh, a viz group in which only the dinosaur's skin is visible. That might be interesting for, for subsurface scattering or uh, ambient occlusion or whatever. So we created a new viz group, and what we can do is copy materials from one viz group to another. That's what we just did with the uh, T-Rex shading group. So now you can see that if we set viz group skin to be the current viz group, all we see is that shading group. If we turn, if we turn the, the skin off, then we don't see anything at all. Now a simpler way to do that sort of thing if you've got complex geometry and lots of different material assignments is to say that one viz group inherits from another. So that's what we just did. There's a, an attribute for a viz group called subviz groups where if you pick one, you, it, it inherits all that other viz group's materials, but then you can override the materials for each of those, uh, each, each shading group. So here what we're doing is we're picking all the shading groups we don't want to see and turning them off. And the shading group we, we do want to see, T-Rex, uses the same material that was defined in the original viz group. Okay, now we're going to take a, a more complex scene. This is from the quick start menu. It's the T-Rex scene where you've got several objects and lots of different viz groups which have already been defined. The first one is, we, we call R&D all. It's basically all the objects we, which, which are going to be rendered. But then you've also got viz groups for uh, the separate objects. You've got one for the ground, for a dome, which might be used for uh, environment lighting, etc. Okay, so this is our R&D all viz group with all the objects we want to see. Now, if we turn on shading and shadows, you can see that uh, though, though the sphere has shadows for each of the three light sources, the teapot does not generate shadows. Now, why is that? If we look at the light source, it has a viz group which defines which objects uh, will cast shadows from that light. Now, if we look at the, uh, the shadow map for that light, we'll see that it contains just the T-Rex and the sphere, no, t no teapot. And the reason is that that viz group does not contain a material assignment for the teapot. So if we create one, then suddenly in the 3D view, the teapot casts shadows. Now, if we turn the sphere off, for example, then suddenly the sphere does not cast shadows. Now, all the uh, three light sources in this scene share the same viz, viz group. They all see the same objects, but that's not obligatory. Here we can say, for example, that we only want the key light to see the sphere and nothing else. So now, if you look at the 3D view, the sphere is casting a shadow from the key light. The teapot is casting shadows from the other two lights. So we'll recalculate the shadow maps and re-render it, and you can see we get the same result as in the 3D view. Now let's also look at reflections. That's the, uh, the shadow map for the um, key light, the shadow map for the rim light, which sees the T-Rex and the, t the teapot, and the fill light also sees the T-Rex and the teapot. So going back to uh, reflections, y you can see that the teapot and the dinosaur are reflected in the ground, but the sphere is not. Why? Because in real light, uh, as with spotlights, the, uh, the reflections are generated by another light source, and that light source also has a viz group. A viz group called VizG Reflection, which we can see in the 3D view, contains only the dinosaur and the teapot. So here again, if we assign a material to the sphere and re-render, all of a sudden, the sphere will also be reflected in the, uh, in the ground. So viz groups are actually very powerful in real light. You can, rather than uh, assigning lighting parameters to objects directly, they're assigned to viz groups so that the same objects are not necessarily reflected the same way to other objects, they're not lit the same way. It's very flexible. Here what we just did is we said uh, in reflections, in the, in the viz group, the reflection viz group, we're using a different material for everything. That might be useful to uh, to use a simplified material, for example, in reflections. 
Now here what we're showing you is uh, another viz group which we're using for ambient occlusion which contains completely different objects and materials. So in that sense a viz group is very similar to a, a render pass in, in, in another software package. You can use it to generate completely different images from the same scene.